Story 1. Nothing has changed for her. Everything has changed for me. I and my wife have been together for 17 years and married for 6 years. I had my suspicions a few years ago that she was having an affair, and until recently wasn't able to prove it. I'd noticed she had become absolutely obsessed with her phone and changed her password etc. and it never left her sight even taking it to the bathroom with her etc. This is what aroused my suspicions. She recently came home drunk after a heavy night and fell asleep on the sofa and although I'm not proud of it I knew this was my chance to find out. I grabbed her hand and unlocked her phone with the fingerprint. When I found horrified but did not surprise me, she had been exchanging graphic picture messages and WhatsApp messages on a daily basis. She was calling this man every day. They referred to each other as baby. Gorgeous, princess, etc. There was no way this was anything other than a full-blown affair. I forwarded all the pictures onto myself and downloaded the chat logs from WhatsApp and sent them to myself. I spent the next 24 hours reading through three months of their communications, which is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I knew it was the only way I'd get the truth. This man lives in a different country, and they were sleeping together on work conferences whenever they could. There was also an ongoing E. I confronted her the day after, and she denied anything physical had happened between them. She claimed it was all just dirty talk and messages, but I had the evidence in my hand and called her on it. She admitted they had slept together twice on different work conferences and also admitted that the E began two years earlier during lockdown. I wanted to know if she loved him or why she had done what she had done and all she could say is I don't know. Our marriage has actually been pretty good during the period she had been having the affair so it was hard to make sense of it. To make matters worse we had started trying for our first child a few months prior to me finding out and the E had continued during this period. We're at an age where time is of the essence so I need to make a decision whether to stay or cut and run. I've decided to stay. She's cut off contact with the AP and says she is committed to our marriage. I am taking steps to forgive her and trying to give her some breathing space. I need to learn to trust and forgive her and punishing her constantly will end up pushing her away further. The thing I am struggling with is I believe she has shown a lack of remorse. We had the initial period of hysterical bonding and were at it like rabbits during her ovulation period but SX has dried up since. She's also booked a week abroad for a conference in March which is seriously triggering me. I think she should have common sense and cancel this trip to focus on our marriage. I am seriously not ready for that. I don't trust her yet and I don't like how jealous and insecure it's making me feel. She's also taking some guy out for dinner next week which she insists is strictly business and I am also having a hard time dealing with this too. I feel like nothing has changed for her and I am carrying a massive burden around with me. We went home to our families at Xmas, and I had to lie to everyone and pretend everything is okay between us. I am tired of lying and keeping her secrets. She just seems to be carrying on as normal. I don't know what to do. Read her comment. So, she is still going to the conference, and she is taking some guy to dinner next week. Yeah, whatever this is, it's certainly not reconciliation. In reconciliation, a remorseful WS actually implements changes in their behavior to both have better boundaries and also to help their BS feel more secure. And your wife is doing neither of these things. Also, she will 100% meet with her AP on this trip. And please stop any talks about a child right now. You are playing with fire trying to have a child when your marriage is in this kind of shape. Reader comment. If she hasn't changed jobs or looking for a new job, reconciliation wouldn't be an option for me. Tell her the conference isn't an option and work dinners and nights out are off the table for the foreseeable future. If this means she can't do her job, it just means she needs to find a new one sooner. She is rug sweeping and you are allowing it IMO. Reader comment. If you're too afraid of losing her to ask her to respect your boundaries, you'll likely lose her anyway. The longer you let things continue as they have been the longer she'll continue to behave as she has done over the last few years. Story 2. Turning the tables on ex-wife. Long story short, wife asked for a divorce. After I moved out a few months later, I was apologizing to her for random things feeling like I was the reason for the divorce. I suspected cheating a lot but had no proof, and was torn between that and her just wanting out or having a mental breakdown. I tried a number of times previously at first asking what I can do to fix it and was always rejected and I felt very guilty. Luckily, we live walking distance away. Bumped into her quite a few times and the last few times were interesting. She always seems mad when she saw me and acted very rudely. The last time I bumped into her and she started her nasty attitude, I said I wasn't the one that did what you did. She gasped and took a step back. For a moment it looked like she was going to cry and said everyone makes mistakes, nobody's perfect. 
case is closed. She finally admitted to cheating indirectly. I reached out a day later by mail and wrote down a list of things she must change if I were to ever give her a chance. She replied and said, who told you I want to get back to you? I'm done. Not interested. I then told her, oh, like, you still have a chance. Then I replied and told her she was the one that effed up and went behind my back without any justification as I did nothing wrong. And if anyone gets a chance, it won't be me, it would be her and I have too much to offer any woman. And if she doesn't want her chance, that's on her. That felt so empowering. Turn the tables. For the last few months, she was acting like it was me that screwed up and her family did as well. Like she was playing the victim. This was a solid victory and has made a huge difference in my attitude as I felt like that needed to be said to her. Today I needed some info from her for a document, and she texted much more normal like she used her to without anger. Smart remarks are being short. Read her comment. I think a big power move would be to act like you don't care about her anymore. No offer of second chance, no regret, etc. Full moving on and improving your life and yourself. In a year or two when you're in shape and you're dating someone that really respects you and loves you, you will look back on this period and think you were stupid to even think about giving her a second chance. And also, if your lawyer doesn't advise against it, tell everyone what really happened because I'm sure she already talked bad about you to everyone and made you the bad guy. Original poster, luckily no lawyers, uncontested divorce, straightforward agreement, she got nothing and wanted nothing. I thought about approaching her family or shooting off a text to her mom as in their culture her family is very closed and involved with her. Not sure if I will or not but she definitely painted me as the bad guy. Read her comment, please stop doing what you have been doing, it's like a scene between a teen teenage boy and girl who recently broke. Women thrive on validation and affection. Just the fact of what you have been doing is a turn on to her, because with her pissing you off, she knows that she is getting to you. Just ignore her and stop finding reasons to contact her. Ignoring her will drive her crazy. That's all you need to know. Original poster, you are so wrong my friend. What I did made me feel empowered and I could give two SHTS what she does or is doing. It's done, and I got that because I took action and not ran and hid from my emotions. All the NC baloney. It's best to get back the upper hand and take control back from them and make them know it's your decision what happens not theirs. Ignoring doesn't work on everyone. That what she would have done. Made me look like the a whole to family and friends. Get away with what she did. And make me take all the guilt. I had to put a stop to that BS. Read her comment. Glad you feel better. But may I ask, why would you give her a list of things in order for her to have a chance when she clearly doesn't want one? It's over. Just accept it and move on. And see in grey rock her ass. Original poster. More for show and bluster. To let her know I was in the driver's seat. Not her. I know she would never accept the list I gave her which included therapy for herself. Story 3. Update. Is this the end? Is this just delaying the inevitable? Back in April last year, I made my first post here. I was in a relationship for four and a half years with who I though was the love of my life. Obviously, you figure how it ended. I don't expect everyone to read this, and if you do so, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Writing alone helps, but the comments are always amazing. Even the hard to read ones. Please be advised, this is messy and probably confusing. It's hard to be structured when writing on the spot about this. Short version is what seems to be somewhat common amongst young people nowadays. Stuff not going well for you, not feeling happy, excited, or successful at whatever you do. So instead of stepping back from the overwhelming amount of stuff you have, you decide to throw away your biggest support and person who literally does everything for you to figure if something new, different will mend it. This was her. She started feeling stuff for some guy. To this day I don't understand how. She knew he was no good and had been disgusting to other girls. Guess he knew his game. She told me she wanted to pause our relationship to understand what was going on. And I told her that I was okay with it. But she had to cut it for both me and the guy. Not cut it with me and keep developing a relationship with him. Guess what? She kept talking to him and seeing him. Until she ended up having sex with him. She wasn't probably in her most capable mental state. She was completely against that and knew he had multiple SX partners before, which was something that for years she couldn't be comfortable with. Self-esteem problems, which I could understand before, but not now, and not when I knew what she had done. I was completely shocked. Suddenly, the person I thought as pure had now done the most disgusting thing with one of the most disgusting people she could. She was torn after that. She was unbalanced and turned out to go on a self-destructive period. But from the day it happened she had acted like she would never do it again. And that this was some one-time thing. A big mistake that she would regret forever. She kept chasing after me. I also went on a rant, rage, whatever. Got drunk 80% of the weekends from April to August. I lived my life to the fullest. 
As full as one in the shallow and empty escape from trauma can be, there were positives, but I knew I was trying to escape trauma caused by someone I still loved and assumed I would eventually get back with. During this time, we kept some level of contact, talked once or twice about stuff in person, but nothing developed. She was always devastated and desperate. Fast forward to November. After postponing meeting her for maybe more than one month, I agreed to do so. I had decided it was for the best to put an end to it. But she pushed more than ever and between being nice and naughty. Even though I avoided getting involved with her, I ended up agreeing to see her one more time after that, for another coffee or dinner. At this point she knew I had been involved with other women and I knew she had been with another guy after the AP. Then I completely lost control, got a few times with her, had a lot of sex and it sort of felt good. Not much going through my head most of the time, other than the occasions when she was too pushing or brought up SHT from my escape after what she did. I was fine. I embraced that she had committed a mistake, a one-time thing, and she said this multiple times, that she didn't know who she was back then and that she didn't recognize herself. But there's always something more. She thought it was for the best of us to omit that she had been with the AP on and off for a couple of months after our breakup. While I was hurting with PTSD and while she was supposedly attending therapy for her self-inflicted trauma, turns out this therapy was related to abuse from him as well, which she didn't want to talk about or relive which makes me feel she's trying to hide stuff or just the dirty details. Things truly changed from there. The whole view I had of what had happened, the reality I was living from April to November, was nothing like I thought it was. I was being cautious on my destruction to not compromise a possible reconciliation, but she was not. My reality shifted again, even after her explanations of her not being well and pursuing toxic things out of grief because I told her it was truly over. I cannot understand it. After this, we decided to give couples therapy a go. It was all right, but I didn't feel 100% comfortable. The therapy was based on moving forward as a couple, together, which it should. But I always felt like I had to give up on clearing up my mind and figuring out 100% what happened. We talked about her affair, but always in the scope of understanding what it was, meant, and why it happened. She is truly regretted, and this clearly affects her, but I can't be sure if it is more because it's me she's losing or if it is her forgiveness that she will not get. I decided to break most contact a month ago, after an argument we had. I feel like I can't be effective, I've grown to be a distant partner, and all the times we spoke on the phone was for either a rant on me not doing enough, not going to therapy myself, and that I needed to forget the past and move on sort of thing because she can no longer cope with knowing and embracing what she did. She can't be healthy with that situation still present. I stopped with CT of course and I am taking time for myself. I haven't gone to therapy yet. I've been journaling and figuring myself out. But I feel like since I got back to her, I lost more than I gained. I lost focus, self-esteem, and confidence. But I still feel scared as SHT about never seeing her again or losing the relationship I had with her, her family her friends and the activities we could do together. And at the same time, I can't see her fit in family meetings with my family and them coming to know why we split up for a while. Deep down, I feel like someone who wrote one of the most perfect things I read here. I centered my intimacy and my sexuality around her, and she gave herself to someone else. I still haven't gone over that. I will also attend therapy as soon as I can. I feel like these reality changes made me lose my sense of self. Twice, I feel weird all the time and currently I am depressed and underperforming most of the time. I'm constantly getting back on a slump and I believe that this is definitely why. Thanks for reading this. Whoever you are, I hope you are feeling great. Your advice will be gold for me, for sure. Read her comment. Your ex sounds broken and it's not your responsibility. She's an adult and needs to sort herself out. No one can save anyone. Just a recommendation, you should start a meditation practice. I have meditated on, off for 10 years but only the last 3 years seriously. And it has changed me as a person. I just think differently, more big picture, less consumed on the useless, more directed, more mindful, less fearful, more peace. I have gone on 4 retreats in the last 9 months. I would go every weekend if I could. All the therapy in the world will not teach me what I now know. What? who I am under all the layers of delusion. Reader comment, imagine if you built a house with someone, not everything is perfect, but you try to fix stuff and then they decide to burn the house down and leave. Doesn't matter what she does now or what excuses she has, the damage is done and you won't be able to ignore it. It's like cancer, you can either cut it out and heal or you live with it while it slowly kills you. 
It's your life, your choice, but between a few friends and some activities and my mental health and my future relationships, etc., the choice is easy. Cut her off and put an end to this mess. She isn't a princess. You aren't a knight. You don't need to save her or help her. She is an adult and she made choices and now has to live with the consequences of those choices. Read her comment. She's incredibly bad for you, Opus. You will never trust her and therefore you can't build a future with her. It's not your job to rescue her and she damaged the relationship by getting with the AP. I cut her out of my life completely. The sooner you go no contact, the sooner you begin to heal.